Cypher is arguably the most fun agent to play in Valorant. His kit has the potential to be the most creative in the game, and the best of the best Cyphers do tend to be the most flexible. Cypher can stall, play for information, make a play, and do all sorts of things. This is why he has such a high skill ceiling. Good Cypher mains know how to do anything that their team needs or handle whatever the enemy throws at them. I'm an Immortal 3 Cypher main with hundreds of hours on him. I've been playing him since the beta and I've played against and with your favorite pros. And in this video, we're gonna turn you into that Cypher main so that you can hop into your ranked games and be ready to beat anyone. But what if Cypher isn't my style? Don't worry, little Jimmy. Over on Skullcap, we have hundreds of hours of courses covering every agent in the game. So if you want to learn a different agent, this would be the fastest route to go. Or if you need help with your fundamentals or mechanics, then check out our Ask a Pro channel on our Discord where our Radiant level staff can help you with any questions you might have. No other service provides you with this much value, I promise. So quit wasting time and check us out at Skullcap. We'll be waiting. Okay, let's start with Cypher's best ability, and that's his spy cam. This signature, if placed properly, can gather you a ton of information about specific parts of the map, help you anchor down sights, or even act as a flash. Let me explain. Good ciphers put their cameras in high and hard to notice spots. This allows them to survive longer and get more value out of them. This ability is similar to Killjoy's turret, except that you know exactly who you're seeing and how many. So knowing where to put your cam to maximize this information is crucial. Or if the enemy team is running you down and you want early information, you could slap it on a wall as soon as the barrier drops and look right into their spawn. This will tell you how many you see, and if no one is there, then you can run towards the other site and get ready to stack. Again, this all depends on what the enemy team is doing. If you want to anchor down a site, then your best bet is to place your spy cam up high onto a site and use it as the enemy team is just starting their execute. From this high vantage point, you can see exactly who you need to fight, when they're coming, and where. His cam is also great at setting up traps with his teammates. You could put your cam on a wall watching a certain spot, and when it takes contact, your teammates could do something off it. Whether you're flashing, stunning, or even just swinging, these are all decent plays that should be round winning. The enemies are focused on your camera, so they won't expect you to hit them. And lastly, you could use the cam as a flash. Yep, I dubbed this move the Cypher Flash. What you do is when you know you're in a 1v1, you throw your camera on a nearby wall, the enemy goes to shoot it, but you never pop it, and you immediately swing them. You've just caught them with their pants down and got a nasty kill. So Cypher's cam has a lot of different uses, but it's all about positioning. Early information, side anchoring, somewhere in between, aggression, anything. The Cypher's cam is very flexible, and if you know the spots, it can be very nice in so many situations. Next, let's talk about Cypher's trap wires. These are pretty straightforward. They hold flanks on attack and choke points on defense. But just like his camera, he has some nasty trap wire spots that if the enemy runs into, will literally be free kills. If you need someone to watch an area of the map, you can just throw a wire down but just like his camera, you can anchor with these as well. By placing them on the floor, the enemy team won't expect them and are going to get tangled up. And while they're glowing, you can swing out from sight and spam them through your cages. The thing is that you can put these anywhere you want on sight and keep the enemy guessing. Another option that I don't see used nearly as much is that you can also use his trap wires for retake. By putting them in super passive positions, you can really catch them off guard and spam them as they walk into them. Or if you wanna get really fancy, I've seen pro ciphers place trap wires up high where just like the dash, and they would catch them. Now this is the best way to place them. It's to put them in spots where the enemy team is going to path. This could be by placing them in your switches, plant spots, or common lanes that enemies would run through to get into a position. By constantly swapping where you're putting them, you'll keep farming free kills. But one thing to keep in mind is that the enemy teams are consistently aware that your trips exist. This is especially true if you've gotten a few kills off your traps. So when playing Cypher, you have to keep in mind who the enemy team is running. Against a fade or a raise, you'll want to put your trips more passive and farther back. But against a jet, having them near the entrance will really mess up her dash. When facing a KO, you'll want to play more offsite and spam when they hit your trips to dodge his knife. You get the point. Your setup should be matchup dependent and based off the tendencies of the enemy team. Now let's talk about his cages. If you haven't gotten the point by now, his kit is flexible. And this same thing goes for his cages. These throwable frisbees should be used just like smokes. That means using them for one ways, anchoring sights, or execute smokes all makes sense. And once again, you should be using them based off what your team needs. If your camera and trap wires are set up to anchor, your cages should anchor too. If you're using your camera for early info, keep your cages in your pocket and save them for when you're retaking. Are you trying to contest a choke point? Well, most choke points have little ledges that you can set these cages up on, pop them, and boom, you have a one way to shoot the enemy's toes with. The nice thing about his cages too is that they make a sound when enemies hit them, giving you a pretty good idea of when to spam through them. Now I mentioned this briefly, but your setup should all be based off of each other. This means that if your spy cam is passive, then your traps and cages should be as well. 
it's important that your setup is all on the same page because Cypher's utility all broken up isn't that scary. But when everything is working together and you're playing off all the chaos they create, that's when you start hitting some nasty clips. For example, if you're playing Vienna Ascent, a good early info setup would be to have your camera in this window, a one-way on the ledge, and a trap wire at the entrance. Since you're playing for information rather than kills, you need to make sure that you have a safe fallback option since your camera is in a risky spot. But if you want to anchor B site, camera would go in the upper sign of V main, trap wires to complement them, and cages to act as one ways as they push onto your site. All the utility placement in these setups go hand in hand and complement each other well, allowing you to have major impact on any given round. Now, I haven't talked about Cypher's ultimate yet because I think it is by far the weakest part of his kit. Yes, it does provide you with a bunch of good information, but if you think about it, this is the only ultimate in the game that's situational. No other ultimate has a requirement to use it, meaning that if you need a strong ability in a pinch, his neural theft isn't going to help you. And on defense, this ability is a lot harder to use because you're usually playing in a passive position. Your first point of contact is usually going to be when they're hitting your site. So what you can do, which kind of works in my experience, is that you make an aggressive play with the rest of your team and use your ultimate to close out the round once you trade your teammates out. But even this is, I don't know, just doesn't feel right. Despite only being six points, his ultimate is one of the worst in the game. Now let's take a look at a few clips to see what it actually looks like to anchor down a site. In this first clip, I have a tripwire for mid, a trip for site from the enemies run out, and my camera is placed in a spot to let me know exactly when I need to pop my cages. Take a look. Oh man, you're still passive. One enemy remaining. So I started by training my crosshair on the wall, as if somebody goes for switch, I can wall bang them for an easy kill. I mean, I saw Jet go straight at it, surely she's gonna run into it, right? But once I realize that she isn't setting it off, I know that they're about to come on this site. I need to activate my cages to buy me more time. I pop them, but then realize that Jet has tried to run out of them. She never went for the switch, but instead wrapped stairs. I wasn't able to kill the switch player that ended up hitting my trip, but I was able to delay long enough for my teammates to rotate in. I used triple to isolate myself from both lanes. This sets up favorable one versus ones for me and prevents me from getting pinched. All of this utility ended up complementing each other and allowed me to anchor down and hold sight effectively. Now this setup is my personal favorite, so don't steal it. On Haven, this play is usually good for a round. I place both trap wires on long because once they break the first one, they never expect the second. I then place my cam in short like this to spot anybody running up and I line up a cage like this and hug this box. Once they're running up short, I pop the cage and this turns into a one way that I can use to spray the enemy down. Okay, let's see what it looks like in action. Get ready to shoot my trips. After world what did, or not? Where's that cam even from? Oh my god, let's go more. Yeah, so I did pop my cage a little bit late, but it still took the Phoenix off guard and I got the opening kill. Now, remember how I said that nobody expects a second trip? Well, they didn't expect it and it got me the second kill on that jet. And because of the cage and that trip, it messed up their spacing and let me get that extra kill. Once I kill three, I could easily say that I did my job for this round. Now, finally, Cypher's utility is an extension of yourself. Now, this might sound weird, but his cam is like an extra set of eyes, and his traps and cages are like little bots holding parts of the map for you. You can bounce off them to hold angles, take aggro, or create timings for yourself to make a play. It might not make much sense here, but watch this clip and you'll see what I mean. Dark. I can't break up here. Last player standing. 39. Cool. One enemy remaining. Nice. So me and my duo are in a two versus three and we're in a tough spot. I trust in my ability to play off my utility and my duo enough to win the round. He's holding lane and my camera is there to feed me information for when it's time to take my duels. My KO gets reconned and I try and wait for him to die to swing and isolate my 1v1s. I swing, catch Sova looking at my duo and get the first kill. Now I need to somehow figure out a way to fight Chamber and Astra individually in order to take the round. Earlier when I planted the spike, I laid a trap wire down that I planned on playing off of once I had to make a play. It's in such a weird spot that it takes Astra too long to get untangled from it, and I know this is my time to take a duel. So I kill the chamber, but I still have to win a 1 versus 1. Just like my trip, I place my spy cam on the back wall to show me exactly where the enemy is, and I can punish her. I pop the cam and know where she's at. 
She also gave me way too many audio cues to work with, and my cam keeps lighting her up like a Christmas tree. So I cleaned up the round and demonstrated how exactly you should be playing Cypher at the highest level. So by now, you should have a solid understanding on how to play Cypher. His abilities complement one another very well. And if you want to get the most bang for your buck out of them, you need to pair them up. Understand your matchup, how you want to play the round, your team's weaknesses, and be that glue that every team needs. Cypher has a high skill ceiling, but once you put in enough hours, he feels very, very rewarding. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel down below. It really does help us out. Now I get it. Cypher isn't for everyone, and that's okay. Because at Skillcapped, we can show you how to play any agent you want. With a subscription to our site, you gain access to hundreds of hours of ready produced educational content. This also includes access to our Ask a Pro channel in our Discord, where you can set up a VOD review with one of our coaches. No other service can offer you this much value. I promise. Now head on over to skillcap.com and get started in your way to that rank that you deserve. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening, guys. I'm Teets, and we here at Skillcap want to thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.